Well, my mighty and fast Dodge truck died a couple weeks ago, and I was sure it was the fuel pump. We were busy using it for moving rocks, filling all those holes in the ruts and the pathways. So I got Jay to, backyard Jay, to change the fuel pump for me at one in my shop, and it still didn't start. Had great fuel pressure after that, better than before, 45 psi, checked it on the Schrader valve. But just farted and popped and barely started and before it died it just would be very difficult to start and then it would fart, crackle and pop. Sometimes it would start if you dumped some fuel on the air cleaner. So when I realized the fuel pump didn't solve the problem, I know that high miles Dodges and some other high miles machines, the crank position sensor goes bad. Not all cars have them. It's unusual that this one has it because it actually has a distributor. Yep, a typical distributor but a crank position sensor too. Well experience tells me that high miles vehicles that have bad crank position sensors often die for no reason while you're driving them then 20 minutes later, 5 minutes later, whatever, they'll start up and they'll do this for a long time until they completely quit or they'll misfire and then come back to life and sometimes your computer codes will tell you that and sometimes they won't. So assuming that was the problem I went and bought one and it turned out to be not the problem. I'll explain why. Looks almost the same and boy are they in a hard to find spot. I finally found it by picking the truck up in the air by the tractor and looking underneath. Under the fender, since it doesn't have a plastic fender well anymore, up there, up there over top on the hump of the transmission, you can see where I've removed one of the screws and there's a gaping hole there. Well you can't see the other screw, it's down below. Well that's where the sensor was. You see there, right in the center you'll see a snipped wire and a little gap in the transmission. So that was the problem. Crank position sensor wasn't sending a signal to the motor. I'm surprised it ran as long as it did and who knows how long it was since the clutch was last changed. Because the wire feeding it was pinched in the bell housing between the block of the motor and the bell housing of the transmission. And it was pinched really good. So I chopped her off there and I chopped off the other end over there. And I made a redneck repair. I just ripped some wires out of that old dead Jetta. Not the, not the same color, of course. And I attached them all, soldered them, and put some heat shrink around them. And added a foot to the cable to make up for what was all clamped in there behind the transmission. So I'm about to reinstall it. Just need a ratchet and get these off. You can't even use a typical socket on them because they're so close to the head the socket won't fit over them so you have to use an allen key to get this thing out. It's actually quite easy to get out in that space down behind the cylinder head. So now I'm going to reinstall that. See if this beast will fire up and roar. <laughs> Ready for racing again. Alright, here we go. Redneck Repair 101, test, clutch, fuel pump's working, oh sweet, it's never started that fast, it always like started like a big block and rumbled and popped. Cool. Mmm, gotta love it. That's the way I like to get them done. Ready to race. Hmm. Kinda was at least a one beer job. It almost took a beer just to find it. Oh well.